The premise of this article, it's impossible by definition to be racist against white people, true or false? Well, say that we agreed with the premise. Say that we gave him that, that racism has to be institutional to be racism, so it's only the people in power. Um, you could still agree with the fact that Sarah Zhang and other people that spew anti-white hatred, that it is hatred, and hatred is immoral. Hatred is wrong. So even if you want to argue about semantics, about racism versus hate, does it really matter? Uh, it's clear that she is cruel. It's clear that she is immoral. It's clear that she is hateful. So why can't we just call her out for that? I don't really care about whether or not we call it racism. It's hateful. That's wrong. Why can't we just all agree on that? Well, I don't think the left thinks it's hateful. I think they think it's a nice witty jab from the left. I think they, I think the left thinks it's white people's comeuppance for uh, the institutional oppression that white people have levied against minorities in the history of our country. I don't even think the left would agree with your premise, even putting the semantics aside. Right. They have a really interesting definition of responsibility. So really the only responsibility that they see as relevant is white people's responsibility for the possible sins of our ancestors. Maybe somewhere down the line, one of our ancestors held slaves and uh, we should have responsibility for that. But as far as responsibility for the things that they say and do as minorities and as people on the left, uh, that's not something that they want to talk about. It's, it's really interesting. And that's kind of how they dictate what's moral and immoral. So uh, their definitions are just a little bit skewed. Right. They, instead of right and wrong, they want uh, political correctness. They want privilege points. They want feelings to trump objective truth here. I, I, I was shocked, first of all, that this story about Sarah Zhang, that someone's still coming to her defense. I mean, uh, the more and more of her tweets that you read, you realize the horrendous things that she said. She said she enjoys torturing old white men or being cruel to old white men. She's said that white people sharing their opinions publicly is like a dog peeing on a fire hydrant. It's horrible things. Those are two that are actually repeatable on air. Some of the other ones aren't even repeatable. I don't understand why the left would want her to be part of their news organization or why anybody, even some people on the right actually, are coming to her defense saying, well, it's on Twitter and it's a long time ago. She shouldn't be fired based off of old things she said. Yeah, it's hateful. She definitely should. Well, the only reason why I think that maybe she shouldn't be fired is because she represents the values of the New York Times. And if those are the values of the New York Times, then by all means, you can hire every anti-white racist that you want to. I don't really care. I think the credibility of the New York Times kind of went out the window a long time ago. So I don't really mind whether or not she's employed by them. I'm sure they have a lot of anti-white bigots, anti-American bigots over there. Uh, but this is a trend that we're seeing on the left, not just racism against white people, um, but also it's kind of connected with this anti-American hatred as well, that it's kind of cool to be anti-patriotic and anti-patriarchy, anti-white people.